Okay, so what I want to do now is one of the last, well, it is the last transition state model that uh, I have in my part of the uh, of the course, and it's the Zimmerman Traxler transition state model, and it's used to determine the major diastereomer in reactions of this type. It's uh, old old reactions, and um, we've already covered this in in class, the types of reactions. But just have a look at this specific reaction over here. We've got this uh, uh, unsymmetrical ketone. We've got uh, a nice, very strong sterically hindered base, one equivalent of that. At low temperatures, THF, 30 minutes, we are able to form uh, the enolate, specifically the kinetic enolate. And once we do that, the kinetic enolate will look like this. Okay, and missing a missile, methyl group there. And it is actually the lithium enolate that is being uh, formed. The counter ion is, is there. All right, and we're just reacting this with a, a really boring aldehyde. It's a benzaldehyde. And uh, so we can do this uh, this whole mechanism. This is going to kick in over here. That's going to kick in, and that's going to kick out over there. Okay, so we form a new carbon-carbon bond over there, and we should be able to, and after protonation in the workup, the product is going to look uh, something like this. That's the new bond that's being formed. There's the OH. It's the phenyl. Uh, let's count this backwards. That and a methyl group over there. So that you should be able to do by now. But um, one of the things you should notice from this reaction is that two new chiral centers have been formed over there. Um, okay, there's a chiral center in the starting material. Let's just not worry about that for, for now. We can assume that's, um, that part was receiving. But uh, these two new chiral centers that were formed, this methyl group over here and the OH over there could either be on the same side, same side facing up, uh, or same side facing down, and, and that would be called the uh, SYN uh, product, S-Y-N, come back to that again in class, uh, or they could be on opposite sides, in other words, this one is facing up, this one is going down, uh, or this one is going down, and this one's facing up, and they're on opposite sides, and they are the ant that we give the, the anti-product. So, because of this, this uh, feature, we're actually forming, we actually uh, it turns out that um, there's quite a lot of control in these sorts of reactions, and we need to be able to now predict what is the major product in a reaction like this. And the model that's used to, to do this is the Zimmerman-Traxler transition state model. Okay, uh, Zimmerman-Traxler. And uh, <clears throat> the key to the Zimmerman-Traxler actually has to do with something you probably haven't considered yet, and that is the what the enolate itself looks like over there. You see, this enolate over here is actually called the cis enolate. Um, and what it means by that is that the, the O minus that we have over here and the methyl group or part of the enolate, because it was a double bond, they're both on the same side. And so this one would actually be known as the cis uh, enolate. And if they were on opposite sides, so it looked something like this. All right, this one over here would be the trans enolate. And we're going to have to cover this in class. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the features that are able to form both either cis or trans enolate, because that is going to have a direct implication in terms of whether we get the syn or anti product over there, as predicted by the Zimmerman Traxler transition state. Okay, lots of information happening here. Now, in order to understand the Zimmerman Traxler, -Traxler con uh, transition state, the First thing to notice in this uh, um, in this reaction is that there are actually six atoms undergoing the part of this reaction, and they're all connected. So this oxygen is connected to this carbon, is connected to this carbon, which is going to be connected to that carbon, which is connected to this oxygen, which is going to become a minus, which is connected to the lithium, and the lithium itself is associated and connected with this oxygen over there. If we count that all up, one, two, three, four, five, six, we see that we have six atoms connected in a cyclic transition state. And it's this that brings us now back to Zimmerman Traxler proposed that we could actually look at a uh, cyclohexane chair type. Uh, confirmation in order to explain this reaction. And so in order to do this, we're going to have to fit this, these, all right, to a chair structure. So what I always do is I very lightly sketch out a, uh, 
a, a good chair structure. Okay, so that's very light. You probably can hardly see that there on the screen. Um, and what I do is I always fit these structures in the same way to this uh, uh, chair. I always like to stick the lithium at this point over here. And the lithium is just connected to an oxygen and is connected to another oxygen over here. I like to always put the carbonyl oxygen of like this benzolide of the, of, uh, the, the aldehyde one on into the front carbon over here. And so that's actually a double bond. Now the phenyl group, which is connected to this carbon-carbon double bond, in terms of this chair structure, has two possible positions it can go in. It's either going to be going up in an axial position or coming out at an equatorial position like that. And of course, because it is a chair structure, it prefers to be in an equatorial position. And so we draw it coming out like that. This position over here is going to be the hydrogen of the old height and that's the sort of it's like an axial position on this chair okay going towards the back we see that this this oxygen is connected to lithium is a single bond then goes to double bond and then to um, a the, the carbon and the methyl group so it's a single bond it's the minus uh, which goes to the double bond all right so that's that component over there and now what we have is we have to put these two components into uh, the chair structure. Now this is a carbon-carbon double bond. The whole thing is flat. You can see that the oxygen and this methyl needs to be on the same side. All right, that's what the cis uh, And this group over here needs to be on the opposite side of the, the methyl group. And because this is a sp2 hybridized carbon, you, you cannot draw over here, because this will look funny, you cannot have it sitting equatorial, right? If it's coming out like that, it's not uh, a neat representation, and the bond certainly wouldn't be able to fit into that. So actually, unfortunately, even though we may not like it, um, this group over here needs to come up facing in an axial uh, position, all right, like that. It has no choice uh, about that. We just have to do it this way. And then the position of this methyl group over here has to be either it's going to be in this position here or going axial down like that. And if you look carefully, that position, this equatorial type position going at an angle here, would actually be on the same side as this group over here. And the methyl group is not on the same side. It's on the same side as the oxygen. So it actually needs to be coming down like that over here. That's our methyl group. And what's going out here is just the H. All right, so it's not, I, I've distorted the bonds a little bit when drawing out this uh, transition state. Um, and obviously this one that's going in an axial position can't really be in an axial position. It's probably coming more out at an angle like this. But just for convention, we draw out the, uh, the structure, the chair structure like this. Okay, the one thing that hasn't been formed in this reaction is this bond over here. Now, that is the bond that is forming. This is the new bond, all right, that we're getting over here. This is what those arrows are representing. And we can actually now draw the arrows on the structure, and we can see it goes in like that. This double bond comes across to form this new bond over here, and this breaks and becomes an O minus uh, connected to the, the lithium. Uh, so we can redraw. Uh, this uh, structure, I'm just going to take a little bit less space uh, after the reaction. So I fill in my chair, I get a lithium over there, going to now double bond oxygen to the sec butyl group there, bond, 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 going to oxygen, which is O minus, which will get protonated. Uh, the phenyl group is coming out at this angle over here. The methyl group is pointing down. There's an H over here. It's a good good to draw in that H. It's going to help you just now. And that's the entire structure. And then, of course, the lithium is just coordinated to all these over here. Uh, and, and that's our product. So now, now we have this okay, drawn out. This is our product. How does that relate to this compound over here. Now, it's not particularly easy to see this. Grab a 
highlighter here. Um, but this backbone, all right, you see the zigzag pattern that we're getting. The zigzag pattern is this. All right, now notice particularly, I know this is drawn a bit funny, maybe it would be nice if the group was up there, but look over here, zig, zag, zig, zag. Okay, that line that we're following over here is the line of this over here. In fact, this whole molecule, if we kind of turn it around like this, it's a bit of a skew um, zigzag of this over here. And if you have to kind of unravel this, just squish it out and make it into this uh, structure over here, then we see that according to this one, if we follow the zigzags, the methyl group is actually, because we, if we're looking at it from like this angle over here, the methyl group is pointing down, so this will be down, and the O group is also pointing down. In fact, if we put an H over there, it might make it a bit easier to see that the H is pointing up, hopefully, uh, and so this O is also pointing down according to this structure over here that I've drawn. All right, um, however, you need to uh, remember that in this reaction, we have not created a facial selectivity on this aldehyde. So what's happened is the two components have come together, but they could come together like this, my two hands coming together like that, or it could be the other way around and they can react like that. And the thing is, is whether they come together like this or they come together like that, <clears throat> That is what ends up giving us either the, the groups on the same side pointing down or on the same side pointing up. So this whole product is actually a plus minus over here. So this is the basic Zimmerman tracks the transition state. And this obviously we can expand on this and we go take us a bit further. We have to learn um, uh, later on, we're going to see that the uh, trans enolate, if we had to fit this into this model over here, we'd actually put the CH3 where this H is over there. These two would switch places. If it goes over there, then it's opposite the oxygen, but it means that in the product, the methyl group is, would be over here, which means the methyl group would be on the opposite side to the O over there. In other words, this methyl would be pointing up and this one would be pointing down. And that's how we would get the anti-isomer. Okay, so this one is the syn. Uh, and the, an the anti one would be where they're on opposite uh, sides. Okay, so this is just an introduction, as I've said, to the, the Zimmerman Traxler. We're going to cover this more in our last two lectures uh, for this uh, semester. Good luck.